So I picked up this Miller Blue Star 2E portable welder. No idea if it runs. Kind of melted. There's the brush has fallen out of the little contact arm. Parts are trickling in for this portable welder. It's been about a week. I still don't have the major electronic components though, so we're in kind of a holding pattern. In the meantime, let's poke around with these other two machines and just see what we can figure out. Uh, the Powcon welder, I feel like it's gonna work. It powers on, I know the display comes on, so I've got a good feeling about that one. This plasma cutter, not so sure. I'd like to have a plasma cutter. I have one, I have an ancient one that my dad gave me, but it's so old that you can't get parts for the torch. You can't buy the consumable tips and stuff. So it's kind of it's kind of worthless unless I can find another torch for it. Anyway, this machine, I believe, is currently set up for three phase. It's got four prongs here. So we're gonna crack it open and see if we can rewire it. I think you can. The tag here is really hard to read, but I think it says one phase right there. <laughs> okay. Well, it turns out I don't know how to open it. Guess we're going in the other side. Uh, it does have the mark of the beast here. Rental. That's never good. Ah, stuck by a ground cable. It appears we can do single phase input appears to be super simple to set it up. That's the nice thing about these inverter machines, and they pretty much run on anything. This machine can take anything from 208 to 460 volts, single phase, three phase, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, really doesn't matter. The beauty of the inverter welder is that they just take the AC incoming power and rectify it into DC anyway, so it really doesn't care doesn't care what it is. So really all we have to do here is pull that jumper off of L2 and connect it to L3. Maybe if I can get my big fat fingers in there. There we go. Okay. So the jumper was already there. They had it connected from L2 to L2 for three phase. We've connected it from L2 to L3. And then we are not going to use that third wire. So the manual suggests that we use number two American wire gauge SO cord. I don't know what this stuff is here. It's probably number four or number six. So it's, it's too light for single phase operation. But we're gonna try it for right now just to see if this thing will power up. I gotta find another plug that has the, the appropriate prongs for my receptacles. And then at some point we'll have to come back and rewire this. Wiring welders is a little bit tricky. You have to pretty much just have to follow the National Electric Code. There is a special section for welders. You're allowed to derate the wiring based on the duty cycle. So this machine pulls 79 amps at 240 volts single phase, but it only has a 40% duty cycle. So you're allowed to use smaller wires in certain circumstances. So yeah, follow the code or else hire an electrician. It's not worth burning your shop down. Yeah, we're already set up for 220 volt input here. So we should be good to go. Looks pretty good. I mean, it's dusty, but that's to be expected. I don't see any bulging or, or leaking capacitors. 
this board's a little bit loose. That's some kind of current sensing. We'll have to, we'll have to glue that up. I did spot one little problem up here. So on this control panel, there's a, a dial here that adjusts the current, and it's a little wonky. If you look at the back side, looks like the conformal coating has been broken off, and uh, yeah, I can move that around. So that's not good. We need to we need to fix that. Somebody's already been here. You can see they scratched it all up, so they probably chipped off that epoxy coating just so they could re-solder those joints. And it does work, or at least there is continuity from these joints to the pins. Well, we're gonna clean it up again. This is just liquid flux. What is it, Pooch? Let's try it. What's the worst that could happen? That'll work. What is this all about? Like a little piece of prototyping board just glued on top of the main circuit board. It's got a couple of resistors, a couple of maybe Zener diodes, some trim pots. I don't know what that is. It's just patched into the main board. Weird. It's working. I guess. I don't know if it's working right, but it's doing something. That's fantastic. Want to give it a proper shakedown, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Another good news 
we got parts for the portable welder. So let's shift our focus back over to this machine. There we go. Right from the mothership in Appleton, Wisconsin. We've got a new rheostat, resistor, diode. Lots of good stuff in here. Not quite the same. Holes are drilled a little bit differently. But you can really see how melted that thing's gotten. Alright, no worries, I'll just switch the brackets over from the old the old resistor. I suppose there's some kind of calibration for this, I really don't know. So it's a 12 ohm wire wound resistor. But in this position it should be about 8 ohms. And then we gotta re replace this wire. So we're gonna toss this thing. So long as that wire can't contact that resistor. That's what I think happened here. The, the chain reaction was set off by this big ground wire here contacting the resistor and just putting way more load on it than what it could handle. This is an oil filled paper capacitor and it's been leaking. You can see somebody's already tried to fix it. They put JB Weld or some kind of epoxy around the around the crimp at the top. I couldn't buy a direct replacement from Miller or any other source so I just bought a generic motor capacitor from McMaster Car. It's 20 microfarad. It's supposed to be 500 volt. This one is 440 volts. We're gonna hope that's close enough. I don't think that these have polarity like an electrolytic capacitor. We're gonna hope not anyway. Go find a little piece of rubber to put on your head. Looks pretty similar. The old pointer knob is broken. So I splurged and bought a brand new one. It's a little more plasticky, but at least it's not broken. So it should go. Like this. Cool. That'll work. I did go ahead and patch up that 
big ground wire. If you guys can see that. The only thing left is the diode. So I actually went ahead and bought the for real 3 amp diode right from Miller. Because why not? So let's get her installed. That'll work. I'm gonna tie some of this stuff up with some zip ties just so we don't get any more any more meltage. And we should be done in here. Well the fuel tank seemed to have an escape plan the last time we had it running. These old felt bumpers aren't aren't doing much anymore so we're gonna scrape them off and then I've got a big chunk of this commercial roofing material that a customer gave me cut off a strip we'll just kind of tack that around and hopefully that'll hold it in place Got a lot of comments in the last video a lot of them were helpful some of them were really dumb I guess that's par for the course anyway a lot of people were concerned about the valves on this little Tecumseh engine the valve clearance I guess so we're gonna check it real quick I guess the compression release doesn't work. I don't know, does it have a compression release? All right, that one's down. So that one should have some clearance. It has none. Okay, so the exhaust valve is good. There's our overlap. Boy, it's got a lot of overlap. Holy crap. So we should be able to just go one more full turn, right? Now it should be on top dead center compression. Best I can tell, it's supposed to be five thousandths on the intake. 10 thousandths on the exhaust. Yeah, we might not have been as far off as I thought. Get my official valve adjusting tool here. Feels pretty good. And that one's loose. Okie doke. Valves are set. I don't know about that compression release mechanism. It's probably not working. But I don't know what we can do about it. It looks like you gotta tear the whole thing apart. There's some kind of pin in the camshaft or something. So as long as it starts, we're not gonna worry about that. It'd be kinda nice to have a choke cable. The cable's missing, the brackets are missing. I'm not sure how it was originally routed. Should have come through the panel right there. So I got a, a universal choke cable. We'll throw that in. We'll have to come up with some kind of a bracket. It's a six foot cable, so we'll have to cut it off here. Couldn't find much information about the, uh, the routing or the brackets. I saw a few other engines that had a bracket attached to these two holes. I don't see any remnants on this engine, but I went ahead and formicated this guy. Let's see if we can stick it together with some pop rivets.
Nope. <laughs> Guess those are the wrong size. It's fine. I've got three sixteenths rivets. We'll just drill them out. How are you guys doing with your DeWalt batteries? We're having a bad time here this winter. Everything's gotten cold and brittle. I tried to glue that one back together. It didn't work out so well. They're all like that. These batteries are only about a year old. Not too impressed. The plan was to just kind of stick her through there, put in a sheet metal screw. Maybe we should put the hood on first. fuel system is next. This is the original fuel pump. It's kind of hard to believe that it needs a fuel pump. I mean the tank is here and the carburetor is here but there must just not be enough enough drop to make it work. Anyway this is the original fuel pump. It's a Walbro kind of diaphragm impulse style pump. I'm sure it doesn't work. They never do. And you know the fitting's been JB welded. You can buy a kit to rebuild these but from my experience it's it's a losing proposition. They're cast out of some kind of really crappy pot metal and they're never flat. If they get water in them, they get corroded. You can't get them sealed up again. Uh, these things are just kind of junk. So we're going to toss that and we're going to replace it with one of these newer style plastic impulse fuel pumps. I think it's a Briggs and Stratton design, but everybody uses them. Anyway, I think I'm going to mount it right there. Somehow I figured out that that was going to work. Let's give it a shot. Worst case scenario, we just have a couple extra holes in our engine shroud. That just wasn't going to work up here. It was hitting the governor linkage. Plus the hoses were going to be really close to the, the exhaust. So I moved it down here onto the base plate. I'm happy with that. All new hoses. Looks good. Draining the oil out, we'll give her a quick oil change. Although, according to the comment section, we probably already destroyed this engine. But let's cross our fingers and hope for the best. Ah, come on, you amateur. Well, our air filter wasn't looking so hot, so I picked up a new one. Might want to be sitting down when you see what one of these costs. I guess. A lot cheaper than an engine. Will it fit with the pre-cleaner? I think the only thing left is a battery. So the battery cables are in good shape, but unfortunately they're both red, which is very confusing. So we're going to swap this red cable for a black one. You know, anytime you hook up the battery cables backwards, you're going to have a bad day. But on this thing, it could be a really bad day. Probably fry, fry that diode that we replaced and maybe, or maybe worse, I don't know. Huh. 
Okay, that looks better. Ooh. Ooh, maybe they're not in good shape. That thing looks pretty tragic. Now, I've got some new bolts. And I don't have a half inch wrench. That's not so hot. Well, when you know I keep these battery terminal bolts on the shelf for just such an occasion. Looks good. Well, I don't know what size battery this thing had originally, but I've got this reverse terminal group 24 that's been rotten on the shelf for probably over a year. So let's use that. Should work just fine. Well, it's not quite as classy as a bungee strap, but should do the trick. Should we put the piece of heater hose back on it? Might as well. Beautiful. That battery might be slightly overkill to start a 16 horsepower engine, but you know, gotta run what you brung. All right, let's see what she does. Max is done, ready to go home. The good news is it welds. It welds just fine. However, there are still some problems. The sediment bowl is leaking, coming right out of the little shut off here. I tried tightening this, whatever it is, this little brass bushing or packing or whatever. It won't budge. So that kind of sucks. We're going to have to find another sediment bowl or we may just have to eliminate that. I'd like to have a shut off though, so we'll have to come up with something. That's not a big deal. Uh, the other problem is the automatic idle feature doesn't work. It idles up when you strike an arc, kind of, but it won't come back down, which isn't a big deal. I mean, for what I'm going to do with it, it probably doesn't matter at all. But it got me curious, so I pulled this circuit board out. This is what controls the automatic idle. And somebody's been here before, and they've done a few repairs. Looks like they've replaced a couple of the diodes, and maybe there was some damage to the board, like the solder pads were blown off of it. I see a trace here that might be blown off the board. My theory of what happened to this welder is, is evolving. I thought for sure that a ground wire fell onto the resistor and shorted it out and caused kind of a chain reaction in the, in the field circuit. But I'm starting to think that maybe they hooked up the 12 volt battery backwards, possibly while trying to jumpstart it. Because every diode in the field circuit is, was either gone or has been smoked. I don't know. It's a mystery, I guess. Let's get this board out, see if we can try to maybe salvage it. I don't know, these are not available, new from Miller, but you can buy an aftermarket board that replaces it. So worst case scenario, we can always just toss this one out. This thing is a mess. 
I don't even know if it's worth trying to fix. Because I don't know... I don't know what was done to it before or at what stage in the failure they tried to fix it. You know, obviously somebody's been in here and they've replaced that diode, that diode, and whatever that component is there. But I don't know if they did that before or after the rest of this damage to the board. So we got a trace blown off here, trace blown off here, trace blown off here. This is lifted not too good it's all conformally coded it's kind of hard to go through and check all the components so what I do I'm sure it's not the right way but I save these little tails off of various through hole components you know resistors or whatever when I solder one in and chop the the tail off I save it and these work really good for patching up circuit boards because they're already like tinned copper I guess and usually you can just kind of tin the traces and then hopefully solder this component right to it So, yeah, we can't really test the, the diodes in circuit, so it's just kind of a gamble. I'm oh, sorry, I don't have a macro lens, so it's kind of hard to see what we're doing here. So we're just going to tin each trace, and then we'll install our jumper. Try to just kind of stick it like so like so then we can come back and actually kind of solder it in place again I'm not the greatest at this I know enough to just barely get by I think that's it one two three jumpers reflowed the rest of the joints at least the ones that have been repaired I guess let's try it. <laughs> well, that was a short-lived experiment. I hooked it up to power. I flipped the ignition switch on and it turned into a toaster oven. So we now have much more damage. It blew out that trace, blew the jumper off that we put there, blew that trace, blew this heavy trace, Blew the conformal coating off over here, over here, cooked it pretty good in here. That's not good. Not good at all. So I'm betting what happened is this diode here was shorted. Yeah. I don't know, I can't tell. Yeah, so it's not dioding, it's just a just a direct short circuit. So that allowed power to come in on the positive and go right through the SCR to the negative. And the SCR, I bet it's also shorted. Come on. Yep, looks that way. So, yeah, that's probably more like what it should be. Should be above zero, at least on two of the legs, and it is not. So, so yeah, that's not good. I think we're probably at the end of the line with this board. <laughs> we blew her up pretty good. I mean, I could fix this, but I don't know. So we're gonna, we would at least need uh, that diode and that SCR, which those are soldered and riveted to the board through a heat sink. I don't know, it's probably doable, but 
for what I can buy a replacement board for, it's probably not worth it. Bummer. Great, now I have to pee. shut off and our filter we just need to hook it up to our fuel line we'll be all set uh, there we go <laughs> not very dramatic but it is working I like it. I don't know. I'm out of time for this week on the old Miller Blue Star. I'm pretty good at fixing them, but I wouldn't take financial advice from me if I were you. I mean, we spent way more time and probably way more money than this thing is worth. But that's okay. It runs good. It welds good. I've got myself a sweet little portable welder. The only thing we weren't able to resolve was the idle control board. And that's okay because something interesting happened. After banging my head against the wall with our local welding supplier, I ordered the parts from Miller through millerserviceparts.com because they have a simple website that's easy to use that lists the prices and the availability right there for everybody to see. And a few days later, I got my parts, and I also got an email from David over there saying that he had watched my video, and he found it pretty interesting, and he wanted to help me out. It sounds like they might have a used idle control board that I can have to get this, this old girl back in tip-top shape. So we'll see how that shakes out. Shout out to those guys, millerserviceparts.com, or I believe it's welding, welderserviceparts.com. They're down in Georgia. Got Kohler, Onan, Miller parts, whatever you want. Yeah, I guess to be continued. The plasma cutter, it also seems to work. I just did a little bit of testing with it, but I don't see why it won't fire up and, and run. The Palcon MIG welder, I didn't get time to mess with it. So I guess we'll see you guys back here in part three. Yeah.